Did you know the greatest reinforced concrete structures today wouldn't exist without broken flower pots? My name's Tyler Lay. I'm a concrete freak, and this video is for you. Joseph Monier, a French gardener, go France, developed reinforced concrete in 1867. Monier was tired of his clay pots breaking. So what did he do? He tried something new, tried something different, and it worked. He filed for a patent for reinforced concrete, for combining steel and concrete together to help hold his pots together. They would still crack, but he would keep those cracks small. He had big pots, small pots, all kinds of water buckets, and look at this long, crazy thing. The dude's a visionary. I've never even seen a pot like that, but Monier was already investigating and developing it so many years ago. So when you see a crack like this, think like Monier. I'm just gonna keep those cracks small. I'm gonna put reinforcement across it. There are all kinds of different ways to do this. I'm not gonna talk about all of them, but I've got videos on most of them. You should check it out. But how do we know where the cracks are gonna form in our concrete? And the simple answer is, where is the concrete trying to get longer? Longer? Yeah, where is it trying to get longer? This is called tension. Let me show what I'm talking about. If I have concrete and I pull on it, it actually doesn't take a lot of load to make it crack. But if I have reinforcement inside of it, those cracks, they still form, but they're small. And we'd like those cracks, ideally, to be less than 0 0.004 inches. That's what ACI 350 says, that water or fluids won't penetrate it. We don't have to have them that size, but that's what's ideal. If you wanna learn more about this and how to control cracks, you can watch this video. But how do we figure out where the tension is? Well, to do this, we have to become the structure. And we have to imagine the structure deflecting under load and then put that reinforcement where there's tension. And have you seen cracks on previous projects? That means they didn't have enough reinforcement there because we'd like those cracks to be so small we could barely see them. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, if we have a beam that's on supports and we idealize if gravity starts loading it, it's gonna make it move like this or deflect. And at the top, it's gonna be getting shorter at the bottom, it's gonna be getting longer. We call the top, it's in compression, and the bottom, it's in tension. So where do we need the steel? The bottom, of course. We're gonna put it near the tension face. So how much reinforcement do I need? Well, it depends. Yeah, depends aren't just diapers. It depends on lots and lots of different things. And that's why we have engineers. They help us figure out these problems and calculate and see exactly how much we need. Go engineers. But ideally, we'd have closely spaced reinforcement that's placed very close to the surface. Not too close, because we don't want to have corrosion, but close enough to help keep those cracks small. And that's why I'm a big fan of deformed bar mats. They're really small bars that are closely spaced, that are deformed, so they're still gonna grab onto the concrete. I'm also a fan of combining reinforcement and fibers together. You will get improved performance with them both together. I talked about this in this video. You should check it out. Now, if we have another type of beam, a cantilever beam, one that's kind of hanging off a cliff, if we do our job to think about how is it, is it gonna move, it's like this, and there's gonna be tension at the top. So that's where we need our reinforcement. Now we have a really long beam with lots of different supports. Let's think about it deflecting. It's gonna look like this. Where's their tension? There, 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 there. Like all over the place, right? But what happens here? Well, it's getting smaller there, right? It's compressing. But when we put reinforcement in it, we usually, at least in my country, put it almost everywhere. Why? Why would we put rebar where we know there's compression? Well, there's a couple good reasons. Well, one is it decreases labor cost. If I'm already extending the bar, I might as well keep it going. And two, 
the theory is not always right. We don't always know where the tension is going to be. And sometimes, especially in elevated slabs, we need to protect ourselves from surface cracking. So we put our steel in a lot of different places. How about on the ground? Now, you'd look at this and say, it can't deflect, right? Think about it. Where's it gonna move? But as concrete dries, it shrinks. It's like a sponge. It's gonna shrink. And the ground underneath it is gonna restrain it or hold it. It's gonna keep it from moving freely. And this is why people sometimes put plastic underneath their slabs, usually two sheets with at least 15 mils. Here's a whole table of different friction coefficients that ACI 360 has put together. This is how hard it is to get your slab to move over these different surfaces. And we'd like the lowest number, hence the two sheets of plastic. But if the concrete dries more at the surface than at the bottom, it's gonna curl, it's gonna move up and curl. And if there's load on the edges, oh no, it's gonna crack. I hate corner cracking. How do we stop this? Reinforcement, right? We'd like to put the steel near the surface to help keep the crack small. That's where people are gonna see them. A good number is about one and a half inches on an interior floor slab. Are there other places we need steel? Yeah. Sometimes on reentrant corners, a crack is gonna to wanna to form there. And when we're about to pour the concrete, you'll see these diagonal bars there. And we get them as close as we can to that surface, maybe an inch away, just so concrete coats it. So in summary, find the tension. Then use the reinforcement to stop the cracks and learn from your past projects. If you've seen cracks other places, then you know how to stop them. And remember the cracked pots. Remember what Joseph Monier did. He had a problem and he came up with a solution. The world needs your ideas. Don't be satisfied with the status quo. Don't be satisfied with the problems you put up with every day. Don't give up, come up with innovative solutions. We need you and maybe you will be the next Joseph Monier. Viva Le Concrete, baby. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave me a comment in the area below. Tell me about your concrete ideas. I wanna hear them. And check me out on Instagram at concrete.tyler. Take care, everybody. Peace.